What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to get some PSP games up and running on your iPhone or your iPad. Now with this, we don't need any jailbreak at all, and that's because PPSSPP is now officially available over on the App Store. Ever since Apple kind of announced that they will allow emulators on the App Store, we've been seeing a ton of new ones hit the market, and uh, there are a few limitations when it comes to emulation on iOS, given what Apple will allow from the developers. But recently we got two really great ones, RetroArch and PPSSPP, both from the original developers uploaded to the App Store, free to use. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up PPSSPP on your iPhone or your iPad. I will have a full RetroArch video coming up soon. There's a lot of great emulators over there, but they're a little lower end than what we can do here with PSP. This is one of the higher end emulators we've seen come to the App Store, and that's really the big reason I wanted to cover it first. But of course, RetroArch has been a mainstay when it comes to emulation on basically all platforms. Now that we have it on iOS, this is definitely going to kind of open up the floodgates. We've even got access to the XMB theme. Again, I'll have a full tutorial coming up soon, but in this one, we're going to be covering PSP with PPSSPP. Before we jump into it, I did want to give you a look at the announcement from the PPSSPP team. So, uh, you know, PPSSPP has been out for 12 years. They finally got it on the App Store now that they're allowing emulators over on iOS. But there are a few limitations at first, and hopefully a lot of this stuff will be fixed. But given what we've got, I've tested a bunch of games so far, and I'm seeing some pretty decent performance the way it is. No Vulkan support, the iPad Magic Keyboard doesn't work, and the JIT recompiler is not supported. That's one thing that a lot of these developers have been kind of running into with these emulators. The just-in-time recompiler really helps out with performance, but I'm not sure if Apple is really allowing that with emulators on the App Store, but it's just a matter of time before the developers figure something out about this. And uh, RetroArch Achievements isn't working. Basically, what we've got here is OpenGL support with PPSSPP from the App Store. So if you're still interested in playing PSP games on your iPhone or your iPad, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so I've just moved over to my screen recorder so we can get a better look at everything. And there's one application that's pre-installed on your iPad or iPhone I highly suggest kind of getting used to. And that's going to be the files application. I personally utilize this to get my games in the correct location. We could also use external storage to get our games transferred over to our iPhone or iPad using this files application. So just go ahead, open it up, give it a look. It's not too hard to understand what's going on there. First things first, we need to download PPSSPP. So we're going to head over to the App Store. I'll leave a link in the description. We'll go ahead and get it downloaded. Once that's finished, we're going to open it up one time. Now, there's not much we're going to be able to do here because we don't have any games, and that's the next step we need to move over to. Just want to make sure this starts up on your device, and it's looking good right now. So what we need to do is actually get some games over to our device be it your iPhone or your iPad. I personally can't tell you where to get any of these. Uh, ripping your own PSP games would definitely be the way to go, but if you need to get some games over to your device, there's a couple ways we can go about this. You could always transfer them from a PC, be it a Mac or a Windows machine. You could download them directly on your device using a browser. You could upload them to your iCloud drive and then download them directly to your iPhone or your iPad with the files application. Or you could plug in external storage, and that's usually what I do. I've got a one terabyte external drive that I've just plugged in, and as you can see, I've got a couple folders here. One is named PSP, and if we enter this, this is where all of my PSP games are. And the format of these games is going to be very important to play them with PPSSPP. You can use an ISO, or you can use a CSO. So I've got some .ISO files here, some .CSO files here. Got the name of the game, you can kind of tell what's going on here. What I'm going to do is transfer these over to my internal storage on my device. So I'm just going to copy all of these games. Just copy all 11 of them. I'm going to move over to on my iPad, and we've got a folder here called PPSSPP. Inside of this, there's another folder called PSP, and we need to find the game folder. We're going to paste them right in here. That way, PPSSPP can easily find them. And now they're going from my external storage over to my internal storage. And again, if you downloaded them, you'll have a downloads folder. You'll just need to transfer those using the files app. Basically, we need to get those .iso or .cso PSP games in that game folder. They're transferred over. I've unplugged my external storage. So now we've got our games transferred over. Again, you can download them directly on the device, upload them to your iCloud, or transfer them from a PC or Mac. I just used an external storage device. 
we're going to open PPSSPP back up. If we take a look at recent, we haven't played anything, so it's going to be blank. But if we go back into games, PSP, game, you can see we've now got all of our games listed here. And once we start a game up, exit the game, it will be listed under recents. So there's a few things here. Right now, like we saw, Vulkan isn't working with PPSSPP. JIT isn't either, so we do have to rely on OpenGL, and your performance is really going to depend on the device you're using. I'm on that iPad Pro with the M2 chip, so we should be good to go up to 3, 4, maybe even 5x with some of these games. But you might run into some games that just don't perform well over 2x. We're going to go to Settings. Back in, obviously can't be changed right now. In the future, we'll be able to do something a bit different, like Vulkan, and hopefully we can even get access to metal here. Rendering resolution. This is going to affect performance greatly, depending on the device you're running this with. So this will go up to 10x PSP resolution. 8x PSP is 4K. 4x is 1080p. Since I've got the M2 chip, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to do 4x here with most of this stuff. Software renderer is going to be very slow. You don't want to use this right now. Frame skip on older devices may be required right now since we're using OpenGL. But moving down, basically everything else here can stay the same. And if you'd like to monitor your FPS, which I would definitely recommend, right at the bottom here, show FPS counter. We can also show speed. Now if we back up, we can now go ahead and start a game. I'm going to go with Jack and Daxter. On-screen controls are pre-mapped. They're ready to go. We've got our analog stick over here, D-pad. We can actually fast forward if you want to get through those cutscenes easily. X, circle, square, triangle, R, L. And at the very top, if we tap this, it's going to bring us back into PPSSPP. From here, we can save our game. I would recommend saving often. Go back into settings, just in case you need to up or lower that resolution. We can create a custom game config. So if I went through here and let's say I know that this game's going to run at 6x, obviously we'll be using OpenGL. I'm going to take some of this filtering down just a bit. Now this is just to show you what we can do here. We'll go back, create game config. Now every time we start this game up, it's going to use those same exact settings. It's not going to be set across the board. Right now, you can be playing PSP on your iPhone or your iPad. On-screen touch controls are going to work, but personally, I'm not a big fan of these on-screen touch controls. Everything can be remapped, but PPSSPP fully supports controllers, so as long as your controller works with your iPhone or iPad, like a Bluetooth Xbox controller, it's going to work with this emulator. So we can just head into the settings, make sure we're in pairing mode on our controller. It'll show up as an Xbox controller. We'll pair it over Bluetooth. Once it's paired, we'll move back into the emulator. And now, instead of using the cumbersome on-screen controls, we're using a physical controller. And let's just say you wanted to remap these controls. It's really simple with this emulator. We can go back into our menu, and our on-screen touch controls will show back up. We're going to go to Settings, Controls, Control Mapping, and from here, we can totally remap every single button. One thing that I found was the start button actually wasn't mapped to start on the PSP. It was actually our menu button, so you might want to remap that with an Xbox controller. But yeah, I mean, it's really easy to get this up and running, and you can totally disable those on-screen touch controls, or just wait a little bit and they will disappear. And yeah, with this M2 iPad and most of the games that I've tested so far using that OpenGL backend, I was able to go up to 5x, even with something like Chains of Olympus. Tekken 6 is another one that I also tested. So far, looking like some pretty decent performance here with OpenGL, and as soon as we get access to Vulkan and possibly Metal, we'll be able to upscale these games even higher. But yeah, I'm really excited about this, and for the longest time, we've been able to kind of sideload PPSSPP, get it up and running on an iPhone or an iPad, but having it in the App Store so everybody can easily access it without jailbreaking anything is really great. I hope you at least try this out. There's tons of great PSP games that are going to run fine on these devices. And I will have a full RetroArch tutorial coming up soon. There's a lot of different systems that we can emulate there. But, you know, ever since Apple kind of announced that we can use emulators in the App Store on our iPhone and iPad, we've seen those lower-end emulators 
they do perform well on this. This is one of the higher end emulators and that's why I kind of wanted to cover it first. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.